In today's video, we're gonna be talking about continuity of limits. Continuity of limits. What we're gonna do is we're gonna prove that a function is continuous at different points along a graph. So the first thing we're gonna do is talk about the three rules that we can use to prove if a function is continuous at a point or not. The first rule, rule number one, and I'll have these written down so when we're doing examples over here, you can still refer back to these. Rule number one, f at point c exists. This states that the function at any point that we find has to exist. So there can't be a hole there, it can't not reach that. Whatever point we're at, the function has to exist there. That's the idea with rule number one. Rule number two, the limit as x approaches c of f of x, our function, also has to exist. Essentially, if we don't have a defined limit at that point, this function can't be continuous. You may remember with something like a piecewise function where we have, I don't know, let's say something like this, where we have horizontal line going that way and horizontal line going this way. If we were to try approach x equals zero, aka the y-axis, we would have a different limit approaching from the right-hand side and approaching from the left-hand side. Because those left and right-hand side limits aren't the same, then the limit here doesn't exist because we can't just choose one. So that's what this is saying. Our function just cannot be continuous if f of x doesn't exist. And rule number three, rule number three down here, the limit as x approaches c of f of x has to equal c. In other words, whatever we think this limit is gonna be for a function has to exist and equal what we think it's going to be. This last rule will make a little bit more sense when we do some examples, and well, since we have them all written down, we may as well start doing examples. We'll start with this one. We have our xy plane here and here, and I'm gonna draw a graph and we're gonna find something. So it kinda of looks like an x squared parabola, but here we have this little hole, and this point is x equals two. Is this function continuous at x equals two? Well, let's find out. Let's refer to our list of rules. Number one, does this function exist at whatever we're approaching? So in this problem, I stated that we wanted to see if this function is continuous at x equals two, and well, we have a hole. This is a hole on the graph, and because of that, well, we already broke rule number one. It, the function doesn't exist at x equals two. Therefore, this function is not continuous. We're gonna just write no, Actually, we're gonna write not for not continuous. Continuous is a long word and I don't wanna write it down 15 billion times. Let's do another example. Let's draw our x, y plane again. Whoop, whoop. And we're gonna draw this function. Starts at zero, goes out that way indefinitely, goes out this way, and then here we have a point. And this point here is two and two. You may also notice that this point is within the domain of the original function. So, is this function continuous at x equals two? Let's look at our rules. Rule number one, does f of c exist at x equals two? Well, yeah, right here is x equals two, and we have this point, and we also have this point up here. So it certainly exists, that's for certain. That's rule number one checked off. But we gotta get through the other two rules. Now let's check to see if the limit as x approaches c of f of x, aka our function over here, exists. And the answer to that, is no, and let's explain why. When we look at this graph, you'll notice that we have a point here at x equals two and another point at x equals two. And let's just say we went along this function until we reached x equals two. Well, we have two different possible limits. And since we have two limits, we can't choose one and therefore the limit doesn't exist at x equals two. Therefore, this rule is, does not get checked off, meaning that this function is not continuous. Let's do one more example, and then I'm gonna write down a bunch of rules that can help you solve these problems a little bit quicker. So let's draw one more x, y plane. Looks something like this, just like before. And here's our function. And then we also have that same thing up here in the top right corner. You may recognize this function as y equals one over x. And I want you to tell me if f of x is continuous at x equals zero, which is the y-axis here. Is this function continuous at x equals zero? Doesn't look like it to me. It seems to be avoiding the y-axis entirely, both in the bottom left and top right. But just to prove that to you, without you just having to trust my visual here, let's say we, had, we tried to put in y equals one over zero. Well, we can't divide by zero and that will never change. So yeah, f of c doesn't exist here, and therefore we already broke the first rule, meaning that this function is not continuous. But I do wanna use both of these examples to also prove that this function is not continuous. So let's also try and find the limit as x approaches c of f of x. If we approach on the left-hand side, we go here, here, and then our function goes all the way down to negative infinity. So our limit approaching from the left-hand side, so limit as x approaches zero of our one over x function from the left-hand side, is equal to negative infinity. 
Let's do the same thing for the right side. If we go here and then put our finger along this function, eventually our function will reach infinity. So the limit as x approaches zero from the right hand side of one over x is equal to infinity. As you may be able to tell, these two are not the same thing. And just like we've been discussing earlier, if these limits don't agree, then the limit doesn't exist at all. So rule number two also is not satisfied. Now let's look at rule number three. We need to prove that the limit as x approaches c of our f of x is equal to what we expect it to be. In other words, what f of c is, assuming that it exists. And once again, our limit does not exist, and f of c also doesn't exist. The third rule is also not satisfied. I want to make sure that we got this rule in at least once. And as you can see, we don't satisfy any of these with our limit over here. And the last thing we're gonna talk about for today's lesson is some tricks that can help us solve these kinds of continuity of limits problems just a little bit faster. Because there's some things that will always be continuous. Number one, polynomials. Polynomials are always continuous. So as an example, let's just say we had, you know, the polynomial y equals x squared. The graph looks something like this, you know, the classic parabola. This function is continuous everywhere and will be true for any polynomial, whether that's x cubed, x to the fourth, x squared plus seven x minus seven. They'll be continuous everywhere no matter what. So if you see a polynomial, just know that it is continuous and will satisfy all these rules. You may still have to prove this to your instructor, but it will, I promise. Trig functions such as sine of x, you know, trig functions are also always continuous. Our classic wave sine graph, you know, looking something like that, it just goes up and down between zero and one indefinitely because it's just going to infinity and negative infinity and never breaking and always doing the same pattern, this function is also continuous everywhere. And that's true for all trig functions. Everything that I'm listing on this right side of the whiteboard are things that are always continuous. So real quick, I'm gonna write down every other type of function that is always continuous. For example, inverse trig, which is a sine of negative one. This is also always continuous, something like that. So that could be true for cosine, uh, tangent, so on and so forth. Log functions are also always continuous. Exponential functions are also always continuous. Exponential. Let's just say, I don't know, uh, two to the X. That is always continuous along the entire graph. Radicals are always continuous. Radicals. Absolute value functions are always continuous. Absolute value. These are also always continuous. Power functions are also always continuous. And these are all the functions that are literally always continuous no matter where you look on the graph. And it can be a little bit convenient to know this just in case you run across something and you don't really remember or don't know how to prove if it's continuous or not. But if you're not sure if a function is continuous or not, just check all three of these rules. These will always tell you if any function is continuous or not. I hope this video helped you out today. Consider subscribing if it did. And be sure to watch the next video and the rest of the playlist for Calculus 1 if you need the help in the class. In the next video, we're going to be talking about the properties of continuous functions and expanding upon what we've learned today. This is just the basics in the intro. I'll see you guys in the next video. Keep on learning.